Yes. Um, I'd like to jump to your economic policies. And it seems to me that historical facts of the 1920s and 1930s seems to indicate that a free enterprise system led to the Depression. And the more that Hoover used free enterprise and the more right he went with his, with his economic policy, the harder the Depression came. Could you come to terms with that? Yes, I love that question. Um, because, because you are really, and I'm not saying this uh, you know, in, a, in a personally critical way, but you are expressing one of the common myths of uh, uh, 1980 college education. But I would recommend one textbook, because I can't fully answer this. I'll do my best. There's one textbook that if you're interested in that, and if, if, let's say you took the position that you're asking me about and you're challenging me, and you want to really refute it, you have to read one textbook called the, the American Great Depression by Murray Rothbard. Because he turned me around because I was raised to believe exactly as your question implied, is that capitalism and the gold standard caused the Great Depression. And that, that Herbert Hoover was a free market person who, perpetu who perpetuated the Depression because he was demanding capitalism and, and the gold standard and free markets. Nothing could be further from the truth. The full explanation of the business cycle has not occurred until the 20th century by von Mises, who was the 20th century leader of the Austrian school. Of course, he's the one that explains that the business cycle is caused by the Federal Reserve System. Creation of credit, the contraction of credit, the boom and the bust. So you have to look at monetary policy of the 20th, 1920s, again under a Republican administration. Rapid monetary expansion, inflation. Don't ever believe for a minute that inflation is price increases. That is one of the consequences of inflation. Inflation is the increase in the supply of money and credit. So we had the inflation of the 20s. That was setting the stage. We had the contraction of the credit by the Federal Reserve in 1929. They precipitated the crash. And then there was deflation. There was deflation because we were still linked, uh, loosely linked to the gold standard. But if you go back and look at what Hoover did, he did everything, maybe not as efficiently as uh, Roosevelt did, but he imposed a lot of government restrictions and restraints, introduced a lot of the programs that, uh, that Roosevelt just made much bigger. So he was a first one, first of our presidents since George Washington, ever to impose government intervention in the economy trying to take care of the Depression. In 1921, for instance, 10 years before, there was a depression, but it lasted six to 12 months because the government just kept their hands off. But Hoover did not keep his hands off. The inflation of the money supply was the main culprit. Look at the history of the business cycle since the creation of the Federal Reserve, since 1913. We had the inflation of the war, depression of 21, the inflation of the 20s, depression of the 30s, and a business cycle all the way through. Great crash of 1987, it's on and on. But I. Uh, suggest that you read Murray Rothbard. It's a great book, and uh, I'm convinced he'll convert you as he converted me. Yeah, are you talking about Hoover's policies, like in um, helping the banks, or what other policies? Government intervention. He kept wages up, and he had uh, farm programs and, and different things. Uh, he had many, many different programs that he introduced. But the, uh, uh, the, the artificial keeping up of wages, where the correction wasn't allowed to occur, so very many of these programs he introduced.